This video is going to demonstrate how to install the Audio Modder VST Bridge presets uh, manually, which is the recommended installation method. It's it's just a bunch of presets that you need to put in your live folder, but you can arrange them in a way that makes it much easier to get to them. Um, there is an installer, but I do not recommend this method for everyone. Um, it, it doesn't work for everyone, uh, although it does seem to work on the most recent version of, of Mavericks. I, I really do recommend that you follow the manual install process so that you understand uh, how it works and what's happening with your live library. So to begin, first we've got to uh, open up live and make sure that uh, you've cleared it out of any other previous audio modder entries for the bridge uh, if you were to run an update. If you, this is the first time installing it, you, you wouldn't have to do this. But if we go into applications and we look at live, um, you need to make sure that you're running live in the 64-bit version which is visible when it starts and you need to be running the latest version of live. If you run live in the 32-bit version with 32-bit VSTs uh, none of the audio motor presets will work because they have been made for 64-bit versions of the VSTs only. So in, uh, in the VST bridge we have NI racks so because we're going to add this to places again, we can remove this from the sidebar. We have NI instruments, we can remove that from the sidebar. And we have NI effects, we can remove that from the sidebar as well. Okay, so firstly to uh, install the NI effects, we're going to copy this NI effects folder, command C. And then we're going to go into our Ableton Live library, which by default is in your home folder in your music folder and your Ableton user library. On, on Windows this location is different and is showed in the um, in the documentation. Now I'm going to go into audio effects and you can see here this is where I've already got my NI effects but let's just delete that and we can copy it in. And next we're going to install the NI racks, which are the drum racks, and they include um, battery, damage, machine, and machine 2.0, as well as Studio Drummer and Abbey Road. So we go into drum racks, and we just delete NI racks from here, if it is already installed. If not, you just copy in that folder, command C, command V. And so now you have all of the entries that would be available in your Ableton Live browser or on Push. But what we want to do now is actually add these into places. So if we take that drum rack, NI racks, I'm going to drag and drop it over here to put into places. Now this means that it will become much easier to access on Push when you scroll down to places. And I'm going to do that for the other two folders that we installed as well. So we had our inner instrument rack. We had NI instruments. And we also had effects. NI effects. And that should cover the installation. So now you should be able to drag anything from, say, a Razor preset or load it up on Push. And if you have any issues with any VST at this point, uh, not loading, you need to check a few things. You need to make sure that you're running live in the 64-bit version. You also need to make sure that all of your VSTs are up to date and running the latest versions. The other thing you need to do is make sure that you are running VSTs and not AUs so that when you go into your plugins you might be able to see the VST, uh, the plugin there 
but if it's an AU that's been installed, um, these ADG presets are not going to load up. To verify that, we go to Lives Preferences, and on the File Folder tab, we can disable Use Audio Units. Now, it's fine for you to enable it later after you've finished debugging if you've got a problem, but for this step, if you disable that, and you open, you, you close and reopen live again with the VSTs enabled. If all your plugins have disappeared, then that means you've installed AUs. And um, for any of the audio mod presets, I, I recommend you install VSTs. There is one exception at this stage, which is uh, for the Sound Toys presets. When the Sound Toys audio mod presets were done, they were only available, uh, the 64 bit AU was the only way to run sound toys in 64-bit but we hope to update um, the sound toys presets to be 64-bit VSTs soon. When you load an audio modder NI entry the NI VST will reference any of the locations where you installed those libraries but there are, f there are four, no five exceptions to that um, because of the way that they've been coded by Native Instruments so if you go to Macintosh HD users shared for Windows users this is C colon users shared uh, we have to make sure that we have copies of Monarch, Razor, Prism, Spark and the battery for factory library in, in this location everything else um, every, everything else is fine to be in its default location when you installed the complete library these are the only exceptions to it um, so what we can do is wherever you installed complete you can uh, copy Razor, Prism, Spark and Monarch into this folder and that means that the audio modder entries will be able to actually load up these .ens files the other one is the battery for factory library so wherever you've installed the battery, um, battery for factory library, if you can just copy that into user shared, it's the only folder that is you know of a of a decent size at four gigabytes, um, and this was the only way that we could get a consistent location that would work for all users. Um, it, unfortunately, the battery for fact um, the battery for VST doesn't reference relative installation paths. Uh, once you've once you've done all this, uh, you should be fine to to uh, go ahead and, and browse all of the NI complete entries from your push. Now, I'll also demonstrate just quickly how the machine two implementation works. So, if we go to NI racks on push and you drop in a machine VST, we've got uh, two groups here. One is um, the standard machine 2 library and the other is grouped. You'll see here if you load up any of these presets that all of the routing is pre-configured and split out in each pad to receive through this um, external instrument send. So you have you have 16 individual channels to be able to add effects on push all, all pre-configured. Uh, if, if you were to load a group preset that routing would not uh, be pre-configured and that's just uh, for the sake of thoroughness to allow the original sound of the kit as the artist intended um, this implementation of doing the routing can can change the sounds of some some kits if there's a uh, compression on the master track for example in machine but apart from that uh, this is a much much better system uh, for live because it allows you to add individual effects and gating uh, for each individual channel. Now we've made a Max for Live device so Max for Live users get an extra benefit and what this does is it maps these eight dials in each chain onto the 128 parameters which have been been pre-configured for each kit in the VST. So you can do all this from push. You can drop in the Audio Modern Macro X. You map the dials. 
and you'll see now that when I change tune that it's changing that parameter. Likewise if I go into this um, second pad and I change these variables that you'll see that uh, it's it's changing the parameters on the machine VST. So the reason why we've done this is it means that uh, when you hit a pad on push you've got eight dials there ready for you to automate, automate and um, vary the tonality of those individual sounds for every single machine kit.